Welcome everyone to the uh, Ask the Trainer session here. Uh, we're going to be going over specifically sounder-based programming, uh, but if you have any other questions, you can type those in the chat box and we'll answer those along the way also. My name is Gary White, uh, one of the trainers here at Potter, and then we've also got Tony Moore, who's the training uh, supervisor, and he's going to be running the chat box. Any questions you send in there? So let's go ahead and just jump right in here. I'm just going to open up a blank program for an AFC 1000. And we're just going to jump right into the point screen. So we'll make a small example. <clears throat> First thing is we're going to do a couple of NACs just so we can have some general alarm points as well. We'll start off with NAC 1 here. And we'll just call this EOL at room 110. We'll go ahead and make the NAC Gentex sync. And let's go ahead and make one for the second floor here. Also Gentex. NAC3 will be our sounder based power circuit. And then we'll also select the sounder based power option here for the sounder based power circuit. Let's go ahead and add some detectors first. We'll add our first smoke and CO, and then we're also gonna put our sounder base on the actual smoke detector. Go ahead and label these, and we're just gonna label it with the room number. So uh, we don't need to put smoke or co on the actual device name itself because that's going to show up on the panel if it goes into alarm anyway uh, so we're just going to put the room number here so the smoke's going to be room 201 and we're going to put that same exact label on all three of these i'm just going to copy and paste it Uh, next thing we'll do here, the CO detector, we're going to go ahead and check the supervisory box for that. So we want to do supervisory for the CO detectors. And then let's kind of do the same thing with our next couple points here. So we'll do another smoke, another CO. We'll add a sounder base on the smoke detector. <clears throat> and this will be the next room, so we'll call it 202. Next up, let's just do a couple extra smoke detectors for the hallways. We'll do a pole station. Actually, let's make the three smokes and then we'll do a pole station here. These ones are not gonna have sounder bases. These are just gonna be kind of our general area detectors. So, um, First one we'll call first floor hall, second floor hall, have one above the panel, and then we'll have a entry lobby pull station. So we'll stick with that. We're not gonna do a whole lot of points here. We're just gonna do a small example. And then once we start doing the sounder bases in the rooms, you're gonna see, I mean, it, it's just a repeat the process over and over, no matter how many rooms you got. So let's jump over to the zone screen.
Zone one will be our general alarm. And you do want to make sure you name your zones. The zone name displays on the panel when a point goes in alarm, uh, in addition to the point name. So make sure you name your zones. Don't just leave it as zone one, zone two, whatever. Um, that could be confusing. <coughs> Style is going to be alarm, silenceable, latching. All this stuff is is um, kind of just standard on a general alarm. Now what we are going to do is set up our sounder bases so that whenever we have a general alarm in the building, our sounder base activates then too. So this output pattern right here is what determines the pattern on your sounder bases. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to temporal three. Then the first thing I wanna do is just delete everything out of here. Let's highlight it all, hit delete. And I want to start over with a blank zone so I can put exactly what I want in here. And resize these a little bit. Gonna hide my unused points. If you're not um, entirely familiar with the programming software here, we are doing a, a uh, just a general programming webinar tomorrow. Um, so I'm not going to get into all the specifics of every little uh, setting inside of the program for this one. We're just going to focus specifically on sounder bases. And I need to make these unused because I don't want to bother with them. So we're only going to be dealing with our two NACs, our sounder base power circuit, and then our specific points we made here. So for general alarm, I'm going to go ahead and put my two NAC circuits, and I'm gonna put my four general alarm devices in there. I got the first floor, second floor, uh, and above the panel smokes, and then I got my entry lobby pull station. I'm gonna drag those in, and that's just my basic general alarm. Uh, now, I also need to add the actual sounder bases themselves in here, so I'm just gonna grab this, just the sounder base here from room 201, and just the sounder base from 202. And then the last thing, um, which I think is probably the part that gets missed the most, is wherever you put your sounder bases, you have to put your sounder base power in there also. So I need to put my sounder base power circuit in this zone as well. If you forget to do that step, you don't put your sounder base power with your sounder base, it's not gonna do the pattern that you're looking for. So if I was to leave this out and I drop that program in, set off the sounder base, the sounder base would just be constant. There would be no temporal three on it. So always remember wherever your sounder base goes, sounder base power goes with it. And again, if you got any questions along the way, if, um, if I, go over something that you don't understand, you want me to go over it a little bit more, something like that, feel free to put that in the chat box. And we'll answer these questions as we move along. And then we'll also have just kind of a, a little bit of time at the end also for general questions about something maybe not related to sounder bases. So let's go ahead and add some more zones here. And we're basically, what you're gonna need is two zones per room because we're going to have one zone for the smoke in the room one zone for the co in the room so we're just going to add four zones start off on zone two here this will be our room 201 and i am going to put smoke in the label on the zone just because it's going to make it a little easier when you're writing the program Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave that as alarm. We'll leave it as silenceable. <clears throat> we'll make it non-latching, so if they activate the smoke detector in their apartment and they you know, wave the smoke out of it and it clears, the sounder base will turn off on its own. Now, the panel is still going to be an alarm. Um, you could also have it set up where uh, your rooms are doing supervisory on the smoke instead of alarm. 
So a couple different ways to do it. We're just gonna leave it as an alarm, but we'll leave it as non-latching for the sounder itself. Go ahead and set our output pattern here, temporal three again. And then it's just as simple as the smoke and the CO, or the, uh, excuse me, the smoke and the sounder base, and then the sounder base power. Down to zone three, this will be the CO detector for that room. This one's gonna be a supervisory style zone. And we're just gonna leave that one as uh, silenceable. We're gonna leave latching on that one also. Go ahead and grab the CO detector. Grab the actual sounder base itself. And then the sounder base power. So we're only using one sounder base inside the room um, on the smoke detector, and we're just gonna funnel those signals through that one sounder base. The other thing I forgot to change here is the output pattern, which is gonna be temporal four for the CO detector. So if there's a general alarm in the building right here, we're gonna have both of those sounder bases doing temporal three. If the smoke detector in the room activates, we're going to do temporal three just on the sounder base inside the room, just local. And then if the CO detector in that room activates, we're going to have temporal four coming out of the same sounder base. If the CO detector was active, uh, and then while that CO detector was active, the smoke detector went into alarm that would take precedence over it so it would switch over to the temporal three pattern so the smoke detectors are always going to have a higher priority good question in the chat box here how are the sounder base circuits supervised the sounder bases themselves are looking for power and if they don't have power they're just going to go into trouble on their own so you don't have to have an end of line power supervision relay or anything like that on your sounder base power circuit the sounder bases themselves are supervising their own power. Let's jump down to zone four and we'll do our 202. Non-latching on this one, we're gonna set it up exactly the same as we did 201. So non-latching, temporal three for the smoke detector. And then we grab just the smoke and the base comes over with it. And then we add in our sounder base power. Zone five, CO detector, stylus supervisory, change our pattern here to temporal four, and then we put in our CO detector, the sounder base from the smoke detector. Whoops, forgot to check uh, supervisory on that one. So um, if you got a alarm point in a supervisory zone, you're gonna get that red box. So I forgot to make that CO detector itself supervisory. So we've got that. And then we put our sounder base power in there. And it would be the same thing um, if we had, let's say it was a bigger room and we had two smoke detectors or two sounder bases or something like that. So let's say, let's change this 201 to be living room and then let's add another one down here for a smoke detector in the bedroom So we do the same exact thing. If you got two sounder bases in the same room, it's all gonna work the same. So first we'll add our sounder base to the general alarm. And then we would just go to the 201 room uh, smoke and just add that same smoke and sounder base in there too. So any alarm inside of that apartment, living room or bedroom is gonna activate both sounder bases. We could do the same thing for the CO. Uh, if that CO detector in the room activates, 
we're going to activate both sounder bases. A NAC program that has sounder base power puts out constant 24 volts and then starts coding on alarm. That's correct. For zone three, why do we not do CL supervisory? Good point. Doesn't make a huge difference, but we could change that to CL supervisory. We could do that for both of those CO zones. And then the other question here is separate sound for CO. So we are doing that uh, just based on our zone setting. So the smoke detector, our output pattern here, that's what's going to determine our sounder base pattern. And we've got temporal three on smoke detector alarm in the room. On the CO detectors, we've got temporal four set up. The other thing too, is you have to have, make sure you have the right sounder base power in there. So if we had um, rooms on the first floor with one circuit running the power for the CO or the uh, sounder bases, and then we had a separate circuit running the power for the sounder bases on the second floor. You got to make sure you're putting the right power in that zone. Whatever power circuit is running to that particular sounder base, that's what you're going to put in the zone with it. And even if we had, let's say we were doing, we wanted to do supervisory for the smoke detectors. Nothing really changes except for the zone setting. So we made those smoke detectors supervisory, go back to the zone, room 201, it's still gonna be the same exact concept, we're just gonna make it a supervisory zone now instead. Same thing for 202, if we wanted to do it that way. Some places will do um, supervisory on our individual room smoke and then if you have two or three or more rooms and alarm at one time then it'll excuse me two or three rooms and supervisory at one time then it'll switch over to an alarm and activate full building evacuation So let's take it back, let's take these back to alarm and let's say we wanted to do let's say we wanted to set up where if we get more than one room in alarm at the same time, we want to do full building evacuation. So we'll add another zone for that. We'll call it um We'll just call it two apartment alarm, something like that. And then really the only thing you got to do is change your alarm count right here. So change that to two. We'll leave this, put this at temporal three for the pattern. And then you're just going to put your two general alarm NACs in there. And then just put all the room detectors. Let's see, those are the hallways. Here's one, 202, this one. So now whenever two of those detectors go into alarm, I'll go ahead and activate the building evacuation. You could do the same thing with supervisory. It gets a little complicated. Well, I shouldn't say it's complicated. You just have to add some extra parts. So. If you wanted to do supervisory in the rooms for individual, and then if you had more than one room in alarm or in supervisory, you wanted to switch it over to an alarm and activate the building evacuation, you'd basically have to take a supervisory zone, put all your smoke detectors in there, because they'd be supervisory at that point, and have that activate a separate output that you monitor as an alarm input. So simple way to do that would be to take a PAM relay and just put it on one of the I.O. circuits and have it monitored with another I.O. circuit.
You could also do it with an OROI module, which is one output, one input. So that's pretty much the basics of the sounder base programming. Um, there's a couple moving parts there you got to watch out for, but um, for the most part, it's pretty simple. Uh, and once you get going on the process, I mean, you can knock those out pretty quick. If you had, if you had a huge list of points over here, and you named them, you know, by room, you could take this and sort by name, and then you could just drop it down and just look at your room 201 points. Uh, just look at your 202 points. So even if you had to do this for 100 different rooms, it can still be a pretty quick process once you get in the habit of switching those over. You could label separate uh, zones at one time. Let's just add 10. And let's highlight all those. And let's just say we know what these are all going to be. Uh, we're just going to have apartment. Let's just go with 203. That'd be next. 203 smoke. And then I'm going to have 203 CO. 204. You could just go right down the line. So part of it, part of making it faster is just getting used to kind of some of these little things you can do in the software to make things faster for you. These would obviously be my supervisory zones. Change those to supervisory. And then I'd also be changing all of my output patterns. So I can select them all at once. I can click on one, hold down control, click on the other ones, right click, make them all 10.03 and then go to the COs and make those all in 404. So you could set up all your zones uh, quickly. And then at that point, you're just gonna click out of there and just start dragging the points over. So it can be a pretty quick process once you get used to how to uh, use the software to your advantage. So well, that's pretty much it. Is there is there any questions on the sounder based stuff? Any questions about um, different ways to do it? Something that you normally do uh, that it isn't really covered with this example, or just any questions in general. Pretty open forum for the Ask the Trainer. So if you got any questions at all, it doesn't even have to be program related, can be hardware stuff. Any questions at all, we can take care of those. I'll just go ahead and leave it up here. Um, if you want to type your question in the chat box, you can. If it'd be easier for you to just say the question through your mic, um, we can do it that way also. Just let me know and I'll unmute uh, your microphone and you can ask your question that way if it'd be easier. Question here about the speaker bases. Are they programmed the same way? So the speaker bases um, are not addressable. They're just a speaker. What you can do is add what we call the speaker module. So let's take a look at our points list here. So the Pad 100 SM, that's the speaker module. So you would basically have your speaker base inside the room. And then in, in my opinion, anyway, the best way to do it would be to mount the speaker module outside of the room. And then that speaker module would basically take the place of your sounder base in this program. So let's just say we're only using the channel one. And we would do the same kind of thing here. So we would label it for the room. And you would treat it exactly the same as you did for the sounder base. Do need to add another smoke for that room though. I think I already have a 205, so we'll just jump down to that one. And then you would just take and do the same thing. So you'd put the smoke for that room, and then the 
speaker module for that room. So in the case of a speaker voice system, where you're trying to still get that individual room control, that's gonna require speaker modules. And that speaker module basically takes the place of the sounder base when it comes to the programming. Uh, because the speaker bases themselves are not addressable, they're just um, speakers. So you can do the same thing even if you didn't have the speaker base. If you just had a regular speaker in the room, you could still do the same thing with the speaker module and get the individual control. Another question here about um, sounder bases being mapped to multiple zones. And how does it know when to trip? So it's just like a regular NAC circuit. So if you've got a sounder base in five different zones, any input in any one of those five zones is gonna activate that sounder base. Kind of like how we did the uh, general alarm. We got the sounder bases in here. And then we've also got the individual sounder bases in each room. So whether it's a general alarm, which would be you know this hallway smoke above the panel, pole station, or the actual smoke inside the room, that sounder base is gonna activate. Trip multiple rooms for one second. Uh, no, it, so the question is, would that then make multiple rooms activate at the same time? And the answer to that is no. So the sounder bases always have power. And then the sounder base itself determines when to actually pump that power through and turn on. Um, I guess I guess in one way that also be true for the general alarm. I mean, the general alarm would be activating all the rooms. If you want it that way, you don't have to do it that way. Low frequency sounder bases are the same, yes. The low frequency part is just done by the hardware on the base. So it looks like that covers most of the sounder base questions that I saw here. Um, I'll go ahead and leave this up for probably another 10, 15 minutes if you think of anything else. Again, you can ask any questions you want here. Uh, you don't have to stick specifically to sounder bases. Um, we'll just kind of leave this up and let it roll. And as questions come in, I'll come back in and answer those. Um, other than that, if, you're, if you don't want to stick around, thanks for coming. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at the software programming webinar. Question here about cross zones. Uh, when would cross zones be used? So cross zones are generally used in a releasing application. And I'll just do a real quick one. Uh, just to kind of give the general idea. So you in a, in a releasing application, you might want to cross zone smoke detectors with heat detectors. So let's do this. Smoke. Heat. Let's add a release solenoid. Let's also add a, uh, let's see, we'll do a general purpose because we'll just say there's a release horn in there. We'll call this the solenoid. So we have our solenoid, we'll call this the horn. We'll just add, uh, we'll do two, two smokes, two heats. Just to keep it simple, we're just gonna name it smoke one, smoke two. Now also, this is a um, AFC panel, so it doesn't have all the releasing options, so we, we can't really do a, a good releasing example, uh, but this will kind of give you the idea on the cross zoning. So first thing you do is make your zones. The smoke zone is obviously just going to be the uh, smoke detectors. So smoke one and smoke two. Then we have our heat zone with our two heat detectors. And then we have our releasing zone, which has our actual solenoid and then our release horn. Now, 
these two original smokes would also be in general alarm usually so that they would activate a general alarm and then separately they'd be doing the release so let's go to our cross zone now that we made our zones we just need to cross them together so we'll enable it we'll have the smoke zone the heat zone and it outputs to the release And I need to change the style on this to release too, sorry. Uh, so the style on the releasing zone is releasing. And then basically what how it would work is um, either one of these smokes activates and either one of these heats causes this release to happen. So usually it's gonna be a zone of smokes and a zone of heats. If you wanted to do something else that might be common would be instead of doing a cross zone, you just have one zone of smokes and you put a count of two on it. So I want two smoke detectors in this room to activate before I trigger the release. CO detectors are not attached to the base, but we'll set it off correct. So we've got one room. Uh, well, we got a couple rooms, but we'll just take 201 for the example. Let's just show it on the point screen. So we've got room 201 right here. We got a smoke detector on a sounder base, and then we got a CO detector on a standard base. And then in the actual zone screen, we've tied, here's our 201 smoke tied to that sounder base, and then the CO detector is also triggering the same sounder base. So the CO detector is physically totally separate from the sounder base, but through the software, we're mapping those together. So the CO still activates that same sounder base. And then that same sounder base is also being used for the smoke detector to activate Temporal 3. The sounder bases are Commanded by the panel via the SLC. Yes, yeah, so uh, yes, the sounder bases are controlled by the panel. The power that's on the sounder bases will change based on whatever you set the output pattern in the zone. So whenever you have a temporal four, like we let's just go, let's go to one of these that's a little less busy here. Um, so the CO detector here sets off this sounder base and we're activating a temporal four pattern. So at that point, when this zone would activate, the first thing that would happen is this power circuit right here would start pulsing temporal four. And then at the same time, this sounder base would also activate, letting that pattern come through. And it's not gonna affect, even though this power circuit might be running to 10 different sounder bases, the only one that's gonna be affected by this right now by changing that power is the one that's in the same zone because it's the only one that's gonna turn on. The other sound bases are still gonna stay off, stay normal, nothing's gonna happen there. Even though the power that's on them will start pulsing, it's not gonna affect the sounder bases there unless if they get activated by an input in the zone. Hopefully that answers your question. If not, um, let me know. How long does the sounder base have to lose power before it generates a trouble? Um, I don't know the exact number for that, uh, but I know it's more than what you're gonna have on that pulse. I'd say somewhere around five seconds or so. 